Agent Herring, did the FBI interview the sender of all emails that contain classified information? You know, I don't know the answer to that question, only because I'm a Ledge Affairs guy, I was on the investigative team. Can you find out? You would agree with me it'd be important. I mean, you'd want to interview the person who sent the classified information, Certainly. right? Certainly. But because uh, the recipient thought the C was just the third letter in the alphabet. It, you might be curious whether or not the sender also was clueless in the way he or she viewed classified information, would you not? That would be a logical uh, investigative step. Can you find out whether or not you interviewed the sender of all emails that contain classified information? Certainly. Uh, do you uh, know if the sender of any of the classified emails knew that the information was classified at the time? I don't personally know that. I wasn't a part of the investigative team. I'm sure that... Can you find out? Certainly. Can you find out for me? Yes, sir. Um, there are folks wondering how information gets from a classified source into an email. Did your investigation shed any light on how classified information could get from a classified system into an unclassified email to even be sent? I'm not even talking about the receiving of it, I'm talking about the sending of it. I'm sure they did look at that. Um, that would be sort of a logical question you would ask uh, as an investigator in a case like this. Uh, That's what I thought. But in my, my legislative sort of affairs capacity, I just don't have that kind of business. Well, don't say yourself short. You used to be an agent, right? Still an agent, right? Still. So you know what you're doing. Did the FBI grant immunity to anyone during the course of this investigation? Uh, for immunity questions, I'd have to defer to the Department of Justice for that. It wouldn't be a, an agent who would, who would grant that kind of thing. That Did the Bureau be recommend the granting of immunity? I, I do not know. Do, you know. do you know whether the Department of Justice granted immunity to any witnesses? I know I saw, I, I saw some articles last week, but that's the extent of Well, surely you got better sources than the media for that, don't you? You can ask the guy sitting two people down from you. I would have to defer to the Department of Justice, sir. Do you know whether any witnesses asserted any privileges while they were being interviewed? I don't know. But the Bureau would know that, right? Because they would have asserted the privilege while you were in there. I'm sorry? You, the Bureau would know that, right? Because that, that privilege would have been asserted perhaps while you were in there conducting the interview. What kind of privilege? Are you talking about like attorney-client privilege? Or oh, there are a bunch of privileges. There's priest penitent. I'm guessing that one didn't come up. There's doctor patient. I'm guessing that one didn't come up. There's uh, the Fifth Amendment privilege against incrimination. That one might have come up. Attorney-client privilege, uh, again, there have been media reports that that one came up. Sir, I just don't know the answer to those questions. Um, have you ever heard the, uh, had the attorney-client privilege come up during any of your investigations? Certainly. Who does the privilege belong to? The client. So the client can waive it, right? Can. You understand why Congress might want to know whether or not the attorney-client privilege was waived and who the client was? I can, I can certainly imagine. Yeah, me too. That's why we want to see the file, agent. I mean, you say it's unprecedented. Mr. Cummings used to be a criminal defense attorney. He got to see all your 302s. Ken Buck used to be an assistant United States attorney. He got to see all your 302s. Probation officers get to see all your 302s. Why can't Congress? Sir, I think we have tried to um, provide the information in a way that is understandable. I think the investigative summary tells kind of the story. And I, I do think that the 302s that we provided are, are the important ones. Well, let me ask you this. Um, if those summaries were all anyone ever needed, why don't you just introduce those in trial? Why actually call the witness? Well, certainly, we were we actually trying to make your life a little bit easier in the light of the... the but, see, but see, I don't want my life being made easier. I, I don't want that. I want to know what was said in the 302s. Because the 302 is itself a summary of an interview, right? It's not a verbatim transcript. That's correct. So you have given me the summary of a summary of an interview. And, and I'm not asking for a verbatim transcript because you don't have one. Certainly. I'm just asking for the 302. So I don't have to read your summary. I may read the 302 differently from the way you read it. So why not? 
So I think we've given you the, the, the relevant ones as we... If we if relevant we according to whom? I am telling you, I don't think you've given me all the relevant 302s. Well, the, rema the remainder of the 302s will come out through the FOIA process. I, but, but, but since when did Congress have to go through FOIA Correct. to obtain 302s from an investigation that's not even resulting in any prosecutions that your boss has already said is over? Since when did we have to go through FOIA? So I think that the 302s we have provided, uh, I think that we made a principled decision about what to provide. Uh, it was certainly made at the highest levels of my agency. All right, all right. I'm out of time. That's what that knocking sounds. I, I'm just going to say with all due respect, um, you don't get to decide what we think is relevant. And I do say that respectfully. Uh, the defense attorneys get it all. I think Congress ought to get it all. And you know this, man.